Hello and welcome back to Dr. Logic Awkwardly Does Logic with the rain pouring down behind her, so I hope it's not too noisy. In this video, I'm going to give you the first of the derived rules, modus tollens. Now, modus tollens is very much like conditional elimination, but just going in the other direction. With conditional elimination, we have a conditional, and then we have an antecedent, and then on a new line, we can conclude the consequent. With modus tollens, what we're going to do is we start off with a conditional, but then we have the negation of the consequent from which we can conclude the negation of the antecedent. So it's just going in the opposite direction. In fact, you might actually be familiar with conditional elimination already under a different name, modus ponens. So modus ponens and modus tollens are essentially symmetrical versions of each other. Their names come from the Latin modus, which is just a way or a method or a process or something like that. And then ponens is putting down, putting forward, presenting. Tollens is destroying or taking away or removing. So modus ponens is a method for putting something new down. Modus tollens is a method for taking something away. So there you have it. Who knew that you would have to learn so much Latin just to do basic logic? It's all about the fun details. In any case, let me bring up my whiteboard. There we are so that I can talk you through how the rule works. So basically, here, let's get this down. So this is the rule modus tollens, which we will abbreviate MT. Modus tollens says, if at some line of your proof, say line I, you have a conditional, phi implies psi. And at another line of your proof, you have the negation of the consequent, that is not psi, then at some line after that, say line n, you can write down the negation of the antecedent. And the justification is modus tollens, lines i and j. So there's the schematic version of the rule. Let me write the rule out so that you've also got the written version of it. So if in a proof you have a conditional phi implies psi, on some line i and the negation of the consequent that is not psi on some line j where just our little bit of bookkeeping i and j are not the same line i comes in the proof before n J comes in the proof before N. Then on line N, you can write down the negation of the antecedent, not phi, with annotation MT for modus tollens, lines I and J. So there you have it. It's structurally very similar to the conditional elimination, except going instead of going from the antecedent to the consequent, you go from the consequent back to the antecedent. Now, one thing I said in the previous video is that everything that you can prove with the derived rules, you can actually prove without them. You can use just the basic rules. And I'm going to show you an example of this. So suppose that we have a proof, do it over here in a different color, where at line i, we've got our conditional. It's got some sort of annotation at that line. We don't know what it is. It doesn't really matter. Go down a bit. And then at line j, we have the negation of the consequent. Again, with some annotation, we don't know what. Now I want to show you that even without modus tollens, I can still derive phi. So maybe I'm doing this a little bit further down. I'm going to make a new assumption here at line k, and I'm going to actually assume phi. I'm going to do this so that I can use negation uh, introduction. At line, at the next line, so k plus 1, given that at line k I have phi, and at line i I have the conditional that phi implies psi, conditional elimination tells me that I can write down psi. So conditional elimination, lines i and k, are the justification here. Then, at line k plus 2, I'm just going to go up to my not psi here at line j and reiterate it. 
And now you can see from the assumption of phi, I was able to get a contradiction between psi and not psi, which means that I can close that subproof on line k plus three, I can conclude not phi through negation introduction, setting the subproof from k1 or from k to k plus two. So there you have it. What I want to prove with modus tollens, I could also have done without. In fact, all that modus tollens really allows us to do is to skip this little subproof. We cut out three lines from our proof and just go straight from the conditional and the negation of the consequent to the negation of the antecedent without having to do this little negation introduction in between. So there you have it. Modus tollens, proof of uh, a definition of how the rule works, and a proof that you didn't really need it in the first place. Next time, I will give you the other kind of basic derived rule, which is disjunctive syllogism. This is the rule for anybody who doesn't like or elimination. So let me, there we go. Uh, hope to see you again soon for disjunctive fun. Take care. Cheers.